for tapes of end-time meetings, deliverance services, or Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, writes Post Office Box 21516, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Friday afternoon, April the 20th, 1984. Spring camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Glenn Miller is the speaker of the afternoon, teaching on traditions. Amen. Praise God. Don't forget the meeting. Are we starting at 7 or 7.30? 7 o'clock tonight, and we'll have all this beautiful singing, and then Brother Harris will be speaking tonight, and I thought that was the most tremendous. I started to tell you about this Brother Duncan. He taught sonship. He taught us the gifts of the Spirit. He taught deliverance, and he seemed to have more uh, full orb truth he didn't have it all but he had a lot and and we were in a dried up sort of a church and we were so hungry and thirsty and and it just met our needs but uh we've often talked about the ministries who are in deliverance that don't want any part of sonship and last night when he brought that message i was practically getting raptured and i never thought of it that way i'd never thought of it that way had you and I always say, I've got to hear that tape again. I've got to hear that tape. And Glenn and I was talking about when we got home in bed, and we were saying, we've got to hear that tape again. That was just tremendous teaching and preaching last night. And we'll get, it'll be, as my little grandson said, more better tonight. And Brother Newland followed up this morning, and tonight we'll have more better. You believe it? Amen or not? More better. More Holy Ghost here. We're more loose this afternoon than we've ever been. But by tonight, we're going to really... Be up the glory cloud coming down. I felt it. Feel that glory come down. We gotta have this glory cloud clear down over us, and then we're just hid away in the Lord, and who knows what He's gonna do. Hallelujah. Well, Amen. And I'm not gonna bring you anything basically to shout and praise the Lord about this afternoon in your own spirit, but in the spirit of the Lord, I hope that it will be. Something that will help you to grow in the Lord and to come to a better understanding of the things of the Lord. Uh, in fact, some of you are not going to appreciate what I'm going to say this afternoon. And uh, that's going to show that you're going to need some deliverance. Amen. Turn with me over to Hosea chapter 4. <clears throat> We're going to talk about traditions this afternoon. Traditions of both the church and the world. And we all need, every one of us here still needs deliverances from traditions. Some of us have been delivered already of traditions in one way or another, but we still have others that are uh, a hindrance to us, and we need to be delivered from yet more traditions and have a better understanding of the Word of the Lord to walk in the ways of righteousness and holiness for His name's sake. Isaiah chapter 4 and verse 6. Hosea. Hosea. Hosea 4 and 6. <clears throat> My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And that is true of every one of us. <clears throat> because thou hast rejected knowledge. And Lord, help us not to reject knowledge. Help us to seek after it and to look for it. And then to accept it and put it to work in our lives. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. And I don't want to be rejected of the Lord. I want the Lord's blessing, and I want his anointing and his presence in my life and in this place and in your life. So that we can grow to become a manifestation of Jesus in the earth today. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. The Lord is telling us here that we are priests unto him. But if we, if we reject his word, we'll not be. We'll be disqualified. Seeing thou hast forsaken or forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. We're, we're told that if we reject the word of the Lord, the Lord will reject us from being priests, and then he also will reject our children. 
Whether we want to realize it or not, tradition of the elder, tradition of our denomination, tradition of our whatever is one of our greatest enemies. We are steeped in tradition, and it's very hard for us to change. It's hard for us to accept when we see the change. We try to find reasons to disannul the change or the tradition. Well... That's the way of what was always, always was. That's the way I was taught. We have all kinds of excuses. But our excuses will not hold water when we place them in the light of the Word. And the Word is the light that we need to use as a pattern for to test our traditions and the things that we feel or have been taught or have followed as part of our natural, supposedly, life. There are things about us that we just think are part of us. And they're not at all. And some of those things we're going to look at today. There will be many more that we could find and deal with besides what we're going to look at today. But in whatever denomination you've come out of, or still in, or not in, there are, in those areas, demonic spirits of tradition. Now, some people get mad at this, but it's still true. There is a spirit of the assemblies of God. There is a spirit of Baptists. There is a spirit of Methodism. There is a spirit of Catholicism. And, uh, as, and I'm speaking that as the name itself. There's a spirit of Jesus only that's very prominent in this area. And we've dealt with it many, many times. But you say, well, how can that be? There's nothing wrong with the assemblies of God as, as say, such, or the Baptists as such. But when you are bound to that denomination to such an extent that you can see nothing else except what that teaching is, and when you're actually confronted with it, most people will have a spirit that will answer to that denomination. We have found that as we have dealt with people, that out of them will, will speak a spirit that will answer to the call of that denomination. Now, that doesn't mean the denomination is bad at all. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that it is the tradition or, the, or, or what we have taken on to believe that there is nothing else except that organization, which is contrary to the word of the Lord altogether. For all are the house of the Lord, are the children of the Lord, and no one denomination should, or we should not feel that any one denomination is above the other as far, or that we're better than somebody else. When we have that feeling or that intent, we're wrong. And for years, many, many years, in fact, for 40 years, I guess almost. I believe, I actually believe that there was nobody saved except those who were assembly of God. I literally believe that. My aunt and uncle uh, went to a lovely Methodist church in our town, and I thought, so help me, I believed that they were not saved. And now, as I look back now, I can see how wrong I was. I, my, my mother and father, I've, heard, I've actually heard them say, that they wished they'd get saved. Well, I can see now that they were saved. Now, they weren't in the depth of the things of the Lord as the assemblies of God, but I can see that they were and are saved. And I can see things in their lives today that, where they have grown in the Lord and have matured in the Lord in my aunt and uncle, and I can see that, and they have been a blessing to me. And I can see how wrong and how much error I was taught. And I be, actually believe that. And, how, and, and I never realized the difference and came out of it until we started attending the, the full gospel businessmen's convention and, and come to the realization that different men who were speaking of different denominations that I knew that they had to be saved or they couldn't have testified and witnessed as they did. And, and so I, I praise the Lord for what the full gospel businessman has meant to us and in bringing us here. I thank the Lord for it. I thank the Lord for everything that has been a help to bring me to the place where we are. We shouldn't, as we say, that they say, throw out the baby with the wash water, or we shouldn't spit in our mother's face. And so we need, we need to be thankful for all that the Lord has brought us through and bless them and not curse them, but bless them for what we have learned and, and believe that we're still going to continue and learn. Let's turn over to uh, John chapter 8, verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews, or Hebrews, or Israelites, we'll get to that in a minute, 
which believed on him. If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So, if we continue in the word and study the word, then the word will help us to become free of the errors of our ways and the traditions that we have fallen into. Uh, let's turn over to Luke 16 and 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. So the Lord's calling us to be faithful in obeying and following the word of the Lord. And as we learn the word of the Lord, as we're taught the word of the Lord, then we are responsible to declare and to live and to be that part of the word of the Lord that we learn to become a living reality within us of the word of the Lord. To be faithful in that, not only the least of the, of the word of the Lord, but that which is much. Let's look at Revelation chapter 22 and verse 18 and 19. It says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book, the plagues of Egypt. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Second Timothy 2.15. We can probably most all of us quote that without turning there. But Second Timothy 2 and 15. But Paul's speaking to Timothy, and he's tell he tells Timothy, to study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman, that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So as we learn the scripture, we are not to be ashamed of what we learn or what we know, but we are to tell it unto others, we're to write it on our foreheads and on our hands, we're to have it we're to have it in our mind and to have it before our eyes. On your forehead, that's you put it in your mind. On your hands, you've got it before you to see with your eyes. That we that we, and that we hide this word within us so that it, it becomes a living word. Now, let's turn over to uh, Romans 11. And we're going to start looking at some things. <clears throat> I'm going to deal with some different words for a few minutes. And then we'll get on another sudden. I'm going to deal with the word Jew in the Bible first. I just read over here the word Jew a moment ago. That was a mistranslation, that word there where I read. And that should have actually read Hebrew or Israelite. And should not have read Jew. It says here in Hebrews 11.1, 1, says, I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Now, turn with me to Acts 22 and verse 3. I know there are many things in the Bible that are mistranslated that we can find and pick up. But I'm picking up two or three items that have a very great importance to the way we read the Scriptures because it, it changes our understanding and outlook on who, who we are and what the Bible says. Acts 22 and, chapter, and verse 3. It says, I am verily a man... Now, do you have a King James Version? If you don't, it may read different. But this, I'm reading the King James Version. It says, I am verily a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city of Sisera, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as ye all are this day. Now, what did, does it say here? This is uh, uh, Paul speaking himself. It, it says, I am a Jew. What did I just read before? Paul says he was a Benjaminite. And a Benjaminite is not a Jew. A Jew is a descendant of the tribe of Judah and not of the tribe of Benjamin. And there are many, many places in the Scriptures 
where the word Jew is erroneously used. And it should either be Hebrew, Hebrew, Israelite, or Israelite, and not the word Jew. The word Jew should only apply if it is speaking of the tribe of Judah or someone related, something related to the tribe of Judah. Let's look over here in uh, John chapter 1, and then we'll drop this subject. <clears throat> Verse 47. And Jesus is talking. And Jesus says, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Now, that is a correct translation. Jesus, it, it is translated, it does not say a Jew, it says an Israelite. He was an Israelite, in whom is no guile. And as you begin to study the Scriptures, if you will watch that, and watch how you read it, and correct it as you read it, you will find it will give you a different understanding of many, many, many Scriptures. That you will understand them in a different light than you have before, if, if you will correct the word Jew they read either Hebrew, Hebrews, Israelite, or Israelites. If it applies to the tribe of Judah, then that is the correct. It is correct. Now, uh, turn with me over to uh, Second Kings, uh, chapter twenty-one, and we will look at another item that appears in the Bible throughout the Bible, and it does not appear in the original at all in the entire Bible. Yet it is translated in the Bible. And we're going to read a correct translation here. Verse 2. And he that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, and, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, after the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. Now, most of the places through the Bible, it is translated Gentile. And the word Gentile does not appear in the original. The word, the word it is either heathen, heathens, nation or nation. And you will go over into the book of uh, Acts, and if you will change uh, Peter's uh, vision and put in there nation and nations and heathen and heathen, it will make a great deal of difference to the reading of the vision of Peter on the housetop. Let's look at uh, uh, Matthew chapter 18 and verse 17. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let he be, him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. We have a correct translation here carried over from the original text. Heathen instead of Gentile. But that could just as easily have been translated Gentile as it is uh, over a hundred times throughout the Bible the word Gentile is used. I am not a Gentile. The word Gentile means heathen or barbarian or someone who is uh, uh, without God. The word Gentile refers to a heathen. That's what it means. And I am not a Gentile. I'm an Israelite of the household of faith, and I am not a heathen. And we need to understand that, uh, that we are not Gentile. We are Israelites of the household of faith. And that is a great difference in our understanding of who we are and of, of the Scripture and applying it to us individually. Let's look at Psalm 149, the 149th Psalm, verse 6. And we all, we sing this here, and I suppose a lot more, a lot of you sing it. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people and to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with feathers of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, This honor have all his saints. And that's what the Lord's calling us to. That's our place in the body of Christ, is to bring, is to bring judgment and vengeance upon Satan and all his works, upon, and upon those who are contrary to the word of the Lord. I believe that the day will come when the sons of God will administer the judgments of God in the earth. I believe that, and the judgments of God have to come, or God is not a righteous God. He has to judge sin. His Word says that He will judge sin, and the Scripture tells us that we are His battle axe, and that Jesus has gone and sat down at the right hand of the Father until His enemies are put under His feet. Therefore, somebody's got to be those people who are going to do that. And I believe that we are part of those people, and I, and I, I, and I expect to be part 
are the people who bring the judgments of God upon the heathen. Now, that may sound horrible and strange, but it's, it's a necessary thing. The Scripture says that the judgments of God must come in the land. And the, and the, the, the uh, people of the Lord, I believe, will minister those judgments and will rule and reign for Christ with a rod of iron. Amen. <clears throat> so, when you find the word Gentile in the Bible, change it either to heathen, heathen, nation, or nation. And that will be a correct translation uh, of that word. Now, let's look at another little thing that uh, uh, we hear all the time in, in Christian circles. We hear priests. And I've heard sermons preached on that I'm going to be a king. Well, let's look at the scriptures that they use. And then you look them up for yourself. Uh, let's look at Revelations 1 and 6. Let's learn to rightly divide the word and then to apply it. And if you don't believe what I'm saying, you get out your concordances and your Greek and your Hebrew uh, and look it up for yourself and see what the translation is and, and see what it says in the original. Revelation, uh, verse 6 of chapter 1. And he hath made us king and priest unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Now, I'm reading out of the King James translation. Some of you may have a different translation. And if you do, it will not read that way. Some of, some of them won't. But that scripture, that verse, is not in the original as I read it. The original reads, and hath made us a kingdom of priests unto God and his Father, and not a kings and priests. The original translation says that we are a kingdom of priests. And that's what the Lord's calling us to, a kingdom of priesthood, to administer his word. The priest in the Bible in the Old Testament administered the judgments of God. And God is raising up a priesthood to administer his judgments. Uh, uh, well, while we're over here, let's look at Revelation 5 and 10. This appears four times in the Bible only. But there's been great sermons preached on, I'm going to be a king. Well, I do not agree. I'm going to be a priest. I am a priest. I are one, and I will be one. A priest unto the Lord. Verse 10 of chapter 5. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Now, Part of that's right, but it should. But the original reads, And hath made us unto our God a kingdom of priests, and we shall reign on the earth and not in heaven. That's what it says right there, on the earth. Everybody's looking to reign in heaven. The Lord don't need anybody to reign in heaven. He's got everything under control. He needs somebody to do some reigning and ruling here. And he needs people that, are, that will take authority and stand and take dominion in the name of the Lord, over the powers of thinking. Now, this appears four times in, in, the King, in the Bible, and twice in the book of Revelation, which I've already read, and it appears in Exodus chapter 19. Tradition, things that we have taken and believed because we've read it or been taught it, without looking for ourselves to see if these things be so. <clears throat> Verses 5 and 6 here. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Now, here we have a correct translation in the King James Version. But the other two in Revelation, in the original, read exactly the same as this one does in the original. But what does the Lord say? If we keep his covenant, or his laws and statutes and commandments, then will we be a peculiar people unto him. And we are a peculiar people when we do that. Because nobody else wants to agree that we are supposed to do that. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, <clears throat> verses 5 through 9. It's got one of my favorite verses in it here. You also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And verse 9 says, But you are a chosen generation, 
a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that we should show forth his praise, the praises of him who hath called us out of darkness unto his marvelous light. But a peculiar people or a, or a treasure. We are a treasure. A peculiar people in the original also says a treasure. So we are a treasure unto the Lord, a, a, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Okay. Now, <clears throat> another thing in the Pentecostal areas that is erroneous, that I was born and raised with, and that's the statement we say, plead the blood. There is no scripture for pleading the blood. That is an erroneous uh, statement, and it has no scriptural basis to say, I plead the blood. Uh, there is scripture to sprinkle the blood, and I'm not going to look up these scriptures, but I'm going to quote them to you uh, for your benefit and for the tape. Exodus 24 and 8. Hebrews 12 and 24. Exodus 24 and 8. Hebrews 12 and 24. 1 Peter 1 and 2 are scriptures for sprinkling the blood. <clears throat> or a, a scriptures for applying or appropriating the blood. Exodus 12 and 7. Applying or appropriating the blood. Exodus 12 and 7. Scriptures to cover with the blood. For to cover, use the blood as a covering. Psalms 32 and 1. Psalms 32 and 1, to cover with the blood. Psalms 85 and 2. Romans 4 and 7. Psalms 85 and 2, Romans 4 and 7. Scriptures for covering with the blood. Scriptures for washing with the blood, to wash with the blood. Revelations 1 and 5. And Revelations 7, 14. Scriptures to wash with the blood. Beg your pardon? From the beginning? Revelations 1, 5 and Revelations 7, 14. But as we learn these things, we need to take heed to them so that we walk before the Lord, rightly dividing the word of the Lord. <clears throat> and as we learn to rightly divide the word of the Lord and use it correctly, then we have authority over the power of Satan, and we can say, just as Jesus did when he was tempted in the wilderness, Jesus said, it is written. Now, Satan turned around and quoted it wrong. He, he twisted it a little bit. But Jesus said, it is written. And when we're able to say, it is written, we have dominion and authority over Satan in the areas that we are coming against him with, with the Scripture, both in health and, 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 and physical uh, of our bodies and in deliverance uh, or any area. We have dominion and authority over Satan when we use the Scripture and, and declare unto Satan or in any situation that it is written, because that is our authority, the Word of the Lord. Uh, now, I'm going to change the order of that, and we're going to look at some different types of traditions, of which I and most all of you, I'm sure all of us, have been partakers of. Halloween. Festival under Satan. I have been just as bad a partaker as anybody out there in the world today partakes of Halloween. I used to be, when we first started coming into this, I was superintendent of one of the large Sunday schools and kind of assistant pastor. I helped with everything uh, when the pastor wasn't there. And, and I arranged some of the largest Halloween festivals that you could ever imagine. For our Sunday school, we had over 250 in Sunday school, and that was pretty good Sunday school back 20 years ago. And uh, uh, we we really had put on some shindig. We had the witch's tunnel and and the goblins and the ghosts and the skeletons and everything else. We really paid homage to to, to Saint John on Halloween through the church, and I was responsible for it because I railroaded it and and supervised it, and I made the arrangements for it. Lord, I thank you for forgiving me. I praise you for it. And I confess my sin of it, and I thank the Lord for it. But Halloween is a festival unto Satan, and it's abomination to, to the Lord. Exodus chapter 20. Exodus 20, starting with verse 2. 
I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, or the land of sin. That's what Egypt means, the land of sin. And out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Verse 5, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me or that do not obey my word or keep my commandments, but showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and that keep my commandments. And in another place it says, unto a thousand generations. That's 40,000 years. That's out into eternity. He's showing his mercy. So as we bless and serve the Lord and come into an understanding of his word and apply it to our hearts, we are placing the blessing of the Lord upon our posterity for a thousand generations. We are lifting, we're coming out and learning how to lift the curse and to come in to the blessings of the Lord. Tomorrow I'll talk about curses. Uh, Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44 says, For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. Then it goes on here to say about abominable things and creeping things. I'm not going to get into that today, but it's an abomination to the Lord. You can read the abominations of the, uh, here in the Scriptures. There are two or three chapters that list all the abominable things that God says an abomination. Verse 45 says, For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt, or sin, to be your God. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. So the Lord is requiring us to be holy before him, according to the word of the Lord. Not according to what I think, or what I like, or what I dislike, but according to what the word of the Lord says is my pattern. And the word of the Lord is Genesis 1 through Revelation 22 and 21. That's the word of the Lord. There is no such thing, uh, well, uh, another tradition just come to my mind, but there is no such thing as we only live by the commandment of love. Jesus said, keep my commandments, not my commandments. He said, my commandments. But there's been teachings that teach that there's only one commandment, all the rest are done away with. There's only one commandment now, that's just love your neighbor, and that's the only thing you have to live by. Well, Jesus doesn't say that. Jesus says, keep my commandments. But he says, I give unto you another commandment. In addition, love your neighbor as yourself. That's in addition to the other commandment. And uh, when, they, when we twist the Scripture to make it fit so we can do away with the Scripture, we are coming under the curses that I read in Revelation chapter, uh, chapter 22, verses 18 and 19. We automatically will receive those curses. So the Lord is calling us to be separated and not to be partakers of the customs of the heathen. Now, Valentine's Day, that is just the same as Halloween. It's an abomination to God. Most people sitting here have no idea. You've never studied. You don't know what Valentine's, what Valentine's Day stands for, except to send somebody a Valentine's card. I was born and raised, just like all the rest of you, you went to a country school, and we all had all kinds of Valentines that we gave to everybody on Valentine's Day. Had no idea until just last four or five years, really, what Valentine's Day stood for. It stands for sex. That's what it stands for. That's what it represents. That's what the heart and the arrow of Valentine's is. You look it up and study it, the, the, the heart represents the female, the arrow represents the male. And that's, that's what Valentine's Day is. And when you partake in Valentine's Day, you're partaking in lust and sexual lust, and, and it's an abomination to God. Because it is, uh, we have Valentine parties and all of this, and what we're doing is bringing on our children the curse of sexual lust because of it. And you can look in your encyclopedias, study it, you'll find exactly what I'm telling you. And it's, and it's to the St. Valentine, the Valentine of, of, uh, of uh, uh, fertility. That's what it's to. Uh, another thing that... Uh, is an abomination to God. We've all sat under it, every one of us. That's the steeple on a church. 
People on a church is abomination to God. And 99 people out of 999 people out of a thousand or more that go to every church don't know what that steeple stands for. Look up in your encyclopedia, it'll tell you. It stands for a male erected sex organ. That's what the steeple on a church stands for. And no wonder we have in our churches, we have uh, the, the, the uh, uh, song leader running off with the piano player, the secretary and the running off with the pastor. Because they're inviting uh, 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 sex or they're inviting uh, uh, incest and uh, uh, lust. It, it's invited into the church by the uh, uh, steeple that's on the church. The steeple on the church is automatically inviting the demons of lust and sex into that church because that's what it stands for. Uh, in the Bible, it's called an obelisk or a, a, a phallus. Uh, First Kings, let's look at First Kings chapter 14. Well, it appears many, many times in the Bible, but we'll look at this one. And I have a special reason for looking at this one here. 1 Kings 14 and verse 23. This is one of the main causes of the sins of the children of Israel. And this is the first place where it's mentioned in the Bible here in 1 Kings chapter 14 and verse 23 that it's mentioned. And God told them that they were not to take up with the ways of the heathen, but they did anyway. And for that reason, they were carried away to Babylon eventually because they took up with the ways of the heathen. Verse 23 says, For they also built them high places and images and groves on every high hill and on every green tree. Now that word images means oblique or uh, phallus, phallus, which means a male or female sex organ. That's what it means. And that's what they did. They made statues to them and built them and set them on the hills and worship them as a god. And the Lord says that that was an abomination to him. They were not to take up with the ways of the heathen, but they did, and because of it, they eventually were carried away to Babylon captive. Today, America is on a sex craze. Irma was talking about the pornography channel on TV that they tried to stop. They can't stop it. All it is is, is just open sex, which is abomination to God, it's, it's, uh, the Lord says that incest and these things, you can read it in Leviticus and Deuteronomy. There's two chapters given to the whole thing in Leviticus and Deuteronomy that tells us that these things are an abomination to him and that those who partake of them are, will... will uh, and in, the, in Leviticus and Deuteronomy, they were to be stoned. Now we have grace and we thank the Lord for it so that we can be forgiven. Because if we didn't have grace, we'd all been stoned before now. Because we've all been guilty of... Some of these things that the Lord says is an abomination to him. But thank the Lord that there's grace, and we have grace, and that there's deliverance in the name of Jesus from these things that we have gotten us involved in, that we've gotten ourselves involved in. Another thing uh, is Christmas. Christmas is an abomination to God. Nowhere can you find where Jesus' birthday is ever recorded in the Bible. And in my opinion, Jesus' birthday... It's either the last of September or the first of October, not at the time it's given. How did we come to have December the 25th? In the 5th century, the Pope decided to make the, the date that was celebrated as Tomas' birthday, the son of Samarinus, Nimrod's uh, wife. The Pope decided to make his birthday Jesus' birthday so that he could get the heathen more to agree with the Roman uh, church and get some of them into the church. And he declared the 25th day of December, Tomal's birthday, to be Jesus' birthday. And that's where the birthday of where Christmas came from. And the word Christmas actually stands for a mass to be celebrated to Christ. That's what it stands for, the word Christmas. And uh, uh, Samarinus, who also uh, was uh, Nimrod's wife, also became known as the Queen of Heaven. And she declared herself to be Queen of Heaven. And that came down to Mary and to, to Mary worship. And uh, now Mary is called the Queen of Heaven. But actually, that actually comes from Samarinus, who was Nimrod's wife, who has declared herself to be Queen of Heaven. So that worship has been carried down ever since right after uh, 
uh, Noah and about three or four generations from Noah, why these abominations became a reality and has been carried down clear till today. And we take it to be uh, something that is uh, biblical and holy, and it's an abomination to God. What does it... Uh, there's a scripture uh, in, in uh, Jeremiah uh, refers to this. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah 10, and, uh, well, I'll read, start with verse 1. <clears throat> Hear ye the word of the Lord, which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heaven are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they can do neither evil, neither also is it in them to do good. Now that is the Christmas tree. And the Christmas tree was put into homes and decorated long before there was ever a Lord Jesus Christ. It, it came clear down and was brought down to us and started back in the celebration of the birthday of tomorrow when they brought in a green twig or green uh, evergreen to celebrate new life, the beginning of new life, because they believed and taught that tomorrow's who was killed by wild boars uh, was raised again the third day from the dead. Uh, and so this custom of the Christmas tree began. And the cutting of the tree represented new life coming forth that Tomas was raised from the dead and he came forth and the tree represented that new life, the evergreen tree. Then they added to it the ball. And the ball stands for the worship of the sun, the sun god. So when you hang a ball on a Christmas tree, you're putting a god, you're putting a, a symbol on there uh, 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 testifying that you worship the sun as your god. That's what you're doing. It's an abomination to God. When you put the lights on a Christmas tree, you're signifying that you worship the God of lights or the moon and the stars. That's what they stand for. The lights, the candles and the lights. There was first a candle, and now we have electric lamps, but originally it was candles. And I put many a candle when I was a little kid with clips. We clipped them on with a clip, a candle on a Christmas tree, and I did it. Lord, forgive me. Forgive my parents who did it before me and who taught me the sins of our ancestors the abominations and the curses that we live under in ignorance because we're not aware of the word of the Lord. So when we celebrate Christmas, we're actually celebrating a celebration to satanic worship and to other gods other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the, giving, the giving of gifts, that is satanic. That also was brought in as a, as a, 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 unto Tamaz because they brought gifts to celebrate his raising from the dead. Uh, uh, also with that is the uh, uh, the mistletoe. The mistletoe has a great history of satanic, Satanism, the mistletoe. The, the, the Yule log, which not too many of us know about, but older people used to always have a big Yule log that was brought in in the fireplace, especially people who lived in the country and all. Uh, that has a history of satanic worship. Uh, holly, the red berry, Santa Claus, Santa Claus. Uh, uh, each of these, really, we could take and make a study of each one of them and trace them back to their origin and, where the, and, and what they stand for. But they're all abominations to the Lord. Now, we come up to today. Where are we today? What is today supposed to be? It's called Good Friday. It's Good Friday. Abomination to God. Jesus wasn't crucified today. No way. And Good Friday is a... Is a a satanic abomination to the Lord Jesus Christ. Easter, Easter also comes from Samarinus, Nimrod's wife. Esther, Easter. It's a carry down, derivatives of her name, carry down. And it's, uh, 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 so Easter is a, to a heathen worship, the word Easter. What we should say instead of Easter is the time of Passover. That's what it is, and not Easter. Easter is, is, a, is an abominable thing unto the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's a disgrace unto him. But well, I wasn't aware of that, and for many, many years until I began to study for myself did I come to an understanding of the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus. Jesus actually was crucified 
on Wednesday. And uh, uh, and uh, Wednesday was the day before Passover, which was a Sabbath day or a holy day. Uh, it wasn't the, the seven-day Sabbath, it, but it was the Sabbath of, of the Passover or the holy day or the, the time. And Jesus was crucified on Wednesday at the close or the beginning of the day or the close of the day. Uh, he was put on the cross at six, uh, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, the sixth hour. He died at the ninth hour, or three o'clock in the afternoon, at the very moment when the high priest started the first killing of the lamb for the first for the Passover, Jesus died as our lamb at that exact moment when the veil was rent and made inter- and he became our Passover and our lamb. And then, between then then and sunset on that day, he was laid in the grave, and sunset was the beginning of the Passover. He had to be laid by the time the sun set. And he was laid there and laid there for 72 hours, three days and three nights. But he was laid there at the beginning of the day, not at the close of the day as we call it today. If you'll study ancient uh, uh, history and all, you'll find that we now have things kind of backwards. And we don't know, we don't know that what day they called that day then. Because you see, the calendar's been changed and, and Wednesday and Saturday and Sunday and all this are days that Romans have added to them. And I have no idea what day that was actually called at the time Jesus was died, that he was crucified on Wednesday. We call it Wednesday. I don't know what day they called it. Uh, I suppose maybe somewhere there might be a history, but I've never run across that history of what that day is. But it wasn't called Wednesday as we will call it here today. And Jesus laid in the tomb, uh, or his body was there, but he went to Hades and so forth and set the captives free and preached to those that were there and set the captives free, and came out. And what happened, well, we don't have any record of, except for the uh, fact that he said he was going there, and the Scripture tells us that he was going to preach to those who were captive. And, and uh, there were many who rose from the grave at that time. Well, but Jesus did rise from the tomb, as best I can understand, and, I, as my, and the Scripture tells me. He arose from the tomb on what we call Saturday at eventide, just at sunset. He rose from the grave. Now, Easter sunrise service, there's no scripture for it at all. There's no scripture for Easter sunrise service because Jesus rose from the grave at sunset on the day we call Saturday today, just at sunset. And he met Mary uh, outside the tomb as she went at, at the beginning of the day, the first day of the week, the beginning of the day, would, which would have been sunset, when she could have gone, after the sunset, she could have gone in the tomb and legally gone in there. She met him, and, and he told her that, that he was risen and to go tell his disciples. And it wasn't what we call Sunday morning that he arose. It was eventide of, of Saturday night. And uh, uh, you say, what difference do these things make? It makes a difference as how we look at the Scripture and apply it and rightly divide the word of truth so that we can walk before the Lord in holiness and righteousness, rightly dividing the word, declaring the word of the Lord, and being able to have a power and authority and dominion over Satan, so that when we say it is written, we can have that authority to declare it is written, and expect and believe that the Lord will back us up with all the power of heaven and all the angels and the archangels and the spirits of just men made perfect to back up the authority that we declare that we have in Jesus' name And so the captives will be set free and so that we will learn to walk in holiness and righteousness before him so that in his name there is victory for every one of us. Every one of us. So that we can be set free, so that we can be holy and righteous before him, and we can be a nation of priests walking before him declaring the word of the Lord. Amen. So, that's right. Worshiping the sun god. That's right. Told told him to, to, to look through the wall. And then he dug and he opened the door and he found the the, uh, uh, priests and the elders of Israel sitting inside the temple, worshiping the sun god. Uh, Eighth chapter of Ezekiel. Yes? No. Uh, That's another uh, thing I'll I'll close with that. Uh, Jesus died spiritually. That is not so. That's an abomination. We've got a wonderful book back here on that that will help you. And anybody who you're listening to teaching that, it's a false prophet because that's not so. Satan never had authority over Jesus. Jesus didn't have to wrestle him to take the keys. He had to give them to Jesus. He had to hand them to him because Jesus was Lord and he declared himself to be Lord. And another thing, there are no devils in hell. 
Not yet. And Satan does not have the keys to hell. Jesus has them. And Satan has never been in hell yet, but he will be. Hell belongs to God, and it's a place prepared for Satan and the demons and those others who get there because they don't accept the Lord Jesus. And they're not there yet, but they will be there. And when we say the devils of hell, we're making another erroneous statement because the devils will be in hell, but they are not of hell yet. And because they said to Jesus, are you going to send us before our time? They knew it wasn't time yet. They knew there was a time coming, and they knew it wasn't their time. And Jesus also knew it, and he didn't send them because it wasn't time. But the time will come when they will go to hell, and, and I believe that that's part of our job, to help bind them up and get them bound up and, and help cast them in there. When, God, when Jesus judges them, and at the, ju at the judgment day, when they are cast into hell, I believe that the sons of God are going to stand there and help do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, we are all yet bound with, in areas of our life with traditions. There are things in my life that I keep finding and turning up as I read the Scripture and seeing that I never understood or thought or just happened to see it that way before, and suddenly there it is, another area that, needs, that I need deliverance from, or I need a greater understanding of it, of, of traditions that have caused me to have problems or areas that I've not been taught rightly or taught how to rightly divide the Word of the Lord. And we need, I need help, we all need help, till we come to the fullness of the statue of the Son of God manifestation of Jesus in the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Irma, uh, come and let's pray uh, for all of us here. Uh, prayer be living. See what will take happen. The Word of God says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, and he went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. How many people here this afternoon feel that you're oppressed? Yes? There's, there's quite a few people here that are oppressed. We don't need to be oppressed because Jesus made a way that we do not have to be oppressed. And uh, the Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. How do you call? When I call Glenn, I go out on the front porch if I'm calling him for dinner, and I yell at him, Glenn, come on. So let's all call on the name of the Lord this afternoon. Uh, I believe that we have uh, been slighted. We have by our parents. And I think it's time that our children are not slighted. I think it's time the children understand what I said here this afternoon. And they understand the word of the Lord. And they're not sheltered by saying that we shouldn't talk about these things before the children. The scripture says to teach your children these things. And if we teach our children these things, we'll not have problems with homosexuality and lesbianism and abortion and all these things with our children if we teach them now when they're four and five and six and two and three years old that God says these things are an abomination. If we teach them and they learn and, and not say, oh, our children shouldn't hear that, I disagree. Our children should hear it and we should teach it ourselves to them. And if they don't teach it, I should stand here or your pastor should stand here and they should teach it from the pulpit. Let's call on the name of the Lord. Everyone, whoever, that's all of us, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. God cannot lie. His word is true. And there is deliverance in Zion. The Bible says there's deliverance in Zion. We believe in Jesus. We believe that he can deliver us. And everyone that's under terrible... Now, tomorrow afternoon, we will have a, a mass deliverance service probably. But this afternoon, I want to pray. And, and Glenn and Brother Harris and, and uh, Brother Newland, we're going to pray for those that are terribly oppressed this afternoon, as many of you, I, I see it in your faces, and I want you to stand and step out into the aisle and come, come up toward the front. Those that are really and truly oppressed, this brother right here is very oppressed. Come on. All, all the ones that are very, very, very oppressed, you feel you cannot wait till tonight or you cannot wait till tomorrow. Come right on up. Come right on up. Come right on up. Come up. Come on. Whoever calls, that's right, come on up. I don't know if you want to. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered this afternoon of these bondages. Maybe you've been a, a, a Catholic. Maybe you've been uh, in, in Jesus only. Maybe you've got another Jesus spirit. I don't know, but God knows, and, and most of us know what's in us. The Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. And this afternoon, we're going to lay hands on you. We're going to... Command these spirits to leave you and break these bondages so you can enjoy the meeting tonight. 
Some people cannot sit in a service, the whole service. They're up and down, back and forth. And uh, my dad used to call them the Walker family, always walking around, disturbing everybody else and disturbing the flow of the Spirit. If we can only all stay in the flow of the Spirit, who knows what would happen. And keep our mind veered right on Jesus. Look at the Jesus. Don't look to the devil. Don't worry about the devil. Look into Jesus, and he's going to deliver you. He's going to set you free. He's the one that's going to break the bondages. It's by the anointing that Jesus is going to break the yoke on you. Let's all pray together. Dear Father, Dear Father we come in the name of Jesus. We, come in the name of Jesus. we lift our bondages up to you, Lord. We call it sin. We ask you to cleanse us. By your precious blood, we ask you to deliver us. We call on your name, Lord, and we believe that you will deliver us. We thank you, Lord, for the use of your name. We believe that you are able to set us free by the anointing. We lose the anointing of God over this meeting house this afternoon. And we thank you, Jesus, for the great the thing that you have done that we might be free. We thank you, Lord, that you're truth. And the truth will set us free. We come against all these bondages of Halloween, of Valentine's Day, of Easter and Christmas and all of the powers that go along with these things. We lose ourselves this afternoon. We yield to the Holy Ghost. We obey the voice of Jesus. For you are our Lord. You are our God. There is no other gods before us. And we love you, Jesus. And we thank you for the deliverance power in this service this afternoon. Amen. Now, Brother Harris, would you come? And Brother Newland, we're going to pray for these people. Praise the Lord. Yes. <clears throat> While they're praying, I'm going to call out here for all of us. Father, in the name of Jesus. I take authority over every evil spirit. I bind it till the day of judgment in Jesus' name, that they'll not tear or harm in any way. And I thank you, Father, for the angels of the Lord to come and take them and keep them in bondage till that day when you shall judge them. I thank you for it. I praise you for it. Now, I take authority over every spirit of tradition uh, here this afternoon in Jesus' name, and I bind it in the name of the Lord, and I command to come out of every one of us, spirits of tradition in Jesus' name. Spirits of tradition to denomination. I break the powers of it from off of us in Jesus' name. Spirits of tradition to denomination. I break the curse, the curse of it in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father. I praise you for it. Spirits of tradition to to uh, uh, holidays or or uh, other things. I break the powers of it off of us. I loose us from it in Jesus' name. I break those powers over these people in Jesus' name. Loose us. Come off of us. Come out of us and set us free in Jesus' name. I praise you for it, Father. I thank you for it. I thank you, Jesus. I praise you for it. I praise you for it. Oh, Easter, loose us, loose us. Loose us, loose us in Jesus' name. Loose us in Jesus' name. Every lo- in Jesus' name. I bind every religious spirit. I bind every religious spirit in the name of the Lord. I speak to it in Jesus' name. I bind it. Loose these people. Come off of them in Jesus' name. I break the powers of it in Jesus' name. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I speak to every bondage to, of religious spirits in Jesus' name. Loose us. Loose us. Loose us in Jesus' name. Loose us in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. Come out. I break the power in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out, come out in Jesus' name. Lucifer, come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come on, move, move, move. Move in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Every spirit of the occult, I break every power of every spirit of the occult in every one of us in Jesus' name. Take authority over every spirit of the occult, every spirit of addiction. I break the powers of them in Jesus' name. I bind them. I break them over these people in Jesus' name. Spirits of the occult, I break your power in Jesus' name. Lucifer, Lucifer, come out. Jesus' name. Spirit of the occult. I break the bondage of the spirits of the occult in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I break the powers of them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Spirit of fear. I bind every spirit of fear over all, over all of us in Jesus' name. I take authority over fear. Spirit of fear. Every form. Spirits of fear. I bind you in Jesus' name. 
fear of the dark, fear of high places, <clears throat> fear of close, close places, fear of cars, fear of airplanes, spirits of fear, every type of spirits of fear. I bind you in Jesus' name. I command you to loose these people and set them free. Loose them in Jesus' name. Every spirit of fear, of every kind, bondage to fear. Loose us, people. Loose us. Come up. Come out of us. Loose us in Jesus' name. I break your powers in the name of the Lord. Every spirit of fear, I break your power in Jesus' name. Praise you, Lord. Every spirit of addiction, spirits of addiction, spirits of rebellion, I bind them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I take authority over every one of them in the name of the Lord in this place this afternoon. In Jesus' name. Every spirit of rebellion, spirits of, redic- of addiction, I bind you. Addictions of er- in er- every form. I bind you in Jesus' name. I break your powers over all of us in the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Unclean spirits. All unclean spirits. I break those powers over us. Unclean thoughts. Unclean spirits. Unclean thoughts in our minds. I-, I bind you. Spirits to spirits that talk to us. I bind you. Every spirit that tries to talk, that talks to us in our minds. I take authority over you. I break your powers. I bind you in Jesus' name. Loose us, loose us. I set you free. I set us free. Loose us. Come out of us in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out in the name of the Lord. I break your powers. Loose us. Loose us. Come out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I will praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I will praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I will praise the Lord. I will magnify the Lord. Jesus is Lord. I declare Jesus is Lord. I will declare him Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. I will do it. I will do it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Lord, we receive the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we receive the Holy Spirit today. We thank you for it. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, and loose her, Lord, in the Spirit. Loose her in the Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus' name. Father, I take authority over every spirit of incest in this place this afternoon. I break the curse of incest off of all... God's people today. I loose it from it in Jesus' name. I break the powers of it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I praise you, Lord. I thank you for it, Lord. I praise you for it. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Jesus. And also, and also, there's a lying, there's a lying spirit that talks to her. Mm-hmm. Jesus' name, Father, in the name of the Lord, we take authority over these powers. I find you in Jesus' name. Come on, Luther, Luther, in Jesus' name. Luther, Luther, I find you.
Oh, we have fear and anxiety. We replace it with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We replace it with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hold us. We speak boldness unto her. Sound mind in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, oh Jesus name. Jesus. Father, we come against the sins of our ancestors. I stand as a priest in the name of the Lord and apply the blood of the Lord Jesus to the sins of our ancestors. It has allowed this spirit to have right to our physical body. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I take your rights away and I break your power, brother. And Jesus became a curse, but she doesn't have to bear the curse of her ancestors. And I loose her from this perfect of, of allergy in Jesus' name. And I break the power of her in Jesus' name. Come out of her, Jesus. Lucifer, Lucifer, come out. Lucifer, come out in Jesus' name. Lucifer, Lucifer, come out of her. Lucifer, break the power. Lucifer, come on, come out of there. Oh, come on, break it. Lucifer, come out of there in Jesus' name. Come on. Hallelujah. Father, we speak to this body and command to receive a healing virtue of the Lord in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Body, receive a healing virtue of the Lord. Body, restore yourself in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Well, blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. We've got to sing. A, yeah, we got to sing some praise and worship. Amen. Amen. Father, we speak to every area that's been vacated and anyone here in the name of the Lord. We speak uh, and impart the fire of the Holy Ghost into every place where Satan has been driven out, and we loose the glory and the presence of the Lord over this congregation in Jesus' name. Father, I take that place of authority as priest over this congregation, and I stand in their behalf, and I declare that Jesus is Lord and that we will praise and worship the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I need you, Jay. <laughs> You're needed, Jay. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many of you know Psalm 34? I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name. I saw And delivered me from all my fears. I think we could all sing that this afternoon. Because I think we all got some deliverance this afternoon. Miss, I will bless the Lord at all times. David sang that to his very soul. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, My plea 
and delivered me from all my fears. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. You know, in the mornings I read the Psalms or wherever the Lord leads me to read. And one morning I was reading the Psalms and I was reading Psalms 84. And if you've never really had the Lord to give you a song, just ask him to give you a song. He's not partial. He'll give you a song. And I was reading Psalms 84 and I got to the 11th verse and he said, and I didn't sing that. And, and I never sang that before. I've never even seen it before. But the Lord gave it to me that morning. And it was a joy, and it was a blessing. No one was there with me and my little grandson, and we sang that all day. And just turn to Psalms eighty-four, eleven, and it's just like it's written. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. And it will mean something. If you sing it, really sing it, it will mean something. It will open your eyes to what God really is and what he can really do. The Lord God is my son and my shield. The Lord God is my son and my shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. And no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. The Lord God is my son and my shield. The Lord God is my son and my shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. And no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. The Lord God is my son and my shield. Lord God is my son and my shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. And no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. And no good thing will he withhold from them that walk rightly. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Father. We thank you for your word. Help us, Lord, all, each one individually to study it, to know it, to learn to rightly divide it, and to hide it in our hearts that we will not sin against thee. I thank you, Lord, for giving us that desire, for it truly comes from you by the Holy Spirit, to know thee and to know thee more and more and more and more. We thank you, Lord, for your word. Father, we thank you for the food that's prepared. We thank you for making it health and strength to all of our flesh. We praise you for it. Bless those who prepared it. And bless us as we fellowship together. And then, Lord, we thank you for the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost to flow and to move here this evening. The manifestation of thy powers, the word and song and praise is brought forth to glorify Jesus. And I thank you for it and I praise you for it. Amen, amen, amen. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.